Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. This video is about pouring a concrete slab for a garage foundation. We do a, we do a bunch of these slabs every year, probably 50 to 60 slabs like this. And uh, as you can see, this is also we also refer to this as a monolithic slab or an Alaskan slab. It's a six inch thick slab in the middle and the edges tip down to about 12 inches thick by about 18 inches wide. So this is a pretty typical concrete slab construction for, for us here in Maine. This is actually for the Dean of Colby College in Waterville, Maine. Um, he, they do a lot of work at Colby College every year. They're always adding new stuff and this is for him at his house on the college campus. So uh, I guess he gets a few perks for being the Dean. So as you can see, we got it's about a 36 by 36 concrete slab. And we got it all formed up. We got two inches of styrofoam under this thing and a 15 mil vapor barrier. So that's that's pretty standard. We have to do that on just about every slab we do in Maine just because of their their uh, building codes. We got a matter rebar in this thing, two foot on center, half inch rebar up on blocks. So we're just getting started to pour, just seeing if that's the slump we want. I think that was a little bit stiff, so we're going to give it some water. We're pouring a 4,000 PSI mix with three quarter inch stone. It's also got microfiber mesh in there. And we also use a water reducer. We use that in all our pours. So what that does is it is allows us to pour a little bit looser mix like a six or a seven inch slump and if we didn't have that in there it would it would test out to about a three or a four inch slump so it just it's a chemical additive they put in right at the concrete plant and it it doesn't weaken the concrete but it allows you to pour it a little bit looser and for us I mean we're basically three guys pouring concrete every day so that chemical additive is about three bucks a yard extra, but it's well worth it for us. It's it's like having an extra guy there, really. As you can see, we got some rebar sticking up through. There's going to be a, I'm going to put a little two foot concrete wall on top of this slab after we're done. Yeah, we decided that needed just a little bit more water in the mix. This is going to take two trucks to do this slab about 21 yards there's a lot a lot of pressure on those boards you can you'll you'll see as we get pouring here we're gonna have to add some more braces as we go we got one guy there vibrating the edge making sure the edges are getting nice and smooth that DeWalt pencil vibrator is is awesome man I'm, I went without one of those for years I just thought they were too expensive and then I finally broke down and bought one, and man, I'm glad I did. <laughs> that thing works great. Any of these tools you'll see us using, guys, if, if you like them, if you're interested in them, I'll have links for them down in the description. You can see that guy's getting ready to put another brace there. We got a string running around the top of that board, and we can tell if it moves in or out. Pulling that back edge is the hardest part with that 16 foot chute. Filling that haunch all the way up. We call this a haunched slab too sometimes. So we'll just slowly pour it around the edges. We'll get that whole truck poured out before we start screeding it. It was a really nice day there that day. You can see we're waiting on that guy to get in another brace. It's just hard to tell how many to put in sometimes. I mean you think you have it braced enough and then you really underestimate the amount of pressure that that concrete has on the edge.
If you guys don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated here in Maine. We pour, we specialize in concrete slabs, concrete floors, stamped concrete, staining concrete, concrete repair. We do a lot of epoxy floors. We do concrete overlays. And that's what this channel is all about, that kind of stuff. So if, if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now and hit the little bell notification. I come out with about two videos a week about different kinds of stuff related to concrete. I'm trying to teach you guys everything I know, if that helps. I'm trying to add some value. Um, if that's the kind of stuff you like, go ahead and comment down there in the comment section saying, saying yeah, I want to learn more about that. If, uh, if you're already in the concrete business, then leave me a comment saying, saying I do concrete. I also have a course where I, I made up that teaches you how to form a slab like this and also how to pour it. And I'll have that link down in the description also. It's a, it's a $49 course and it, it goes through all the steps on how to form and pour a concrete slab. So if you, if you don't really know, if you're unsure, but you want to try doing this yourself, that slab is definitely well worth its weight in gold to get. I teach you all my little secrets, all my little tips. I've been doing this 39 years, so we've developed a pretty good strategy for forming these up and pouring them. Yeah, we get rid of that 16-foot shoe. Now we can now we can start going to town here. We'll get him emptied out, get the edges all mag, get the grade shot in the middle with a laser. Then we'll start screeding this thing. I'm actually missing one of my guys here this morning. He'll uh, he'll be here later, but so there's there's just three of us pouring this thing. We have those most of the trucks we use are those rear end dumps. There's not many front end dumps where we are, um, so we're always using these rear end dumps. And when we do get a job where we have a front end dump and a good driver, boy, it's like having an extra person. As you can see, there's always one guy got to be holding the chute. So, I mean, that takes up a whole man for getting the truck dumped out. There, I'm checking the grades now. I'm, I'm making sure that the laser and the receiver are set to the top of that board. And then I'll make my wet pads in the middle. That's how we screed. We wet pad everything and then we we call kick screeding. We also have a laser screed and a lot of times we'll use that on bigger floors but floors like this I don't know it's, it's just as easy for us to kick screed we've done it for so long that's how we were taught and then years and years later they came out with these laser screeds so we do have one but we just pick and choose when to use it There, so I shot that first pad. I put an X on it in a little circle around it, meaning that's to grade, so everybody knows. And then I did it on that other one also. So now we'll grab a 14-foot straight edge. That's a magnesium straight edge too, so it's really light and it's really strong. So this makes it easy when both of us can screed from the outside of the pads. And we don't have to kick. We got her a little low, so we gotta push a little more up there. You can see it's pretty fast for us to screed this way. It gets it really flat too. Most of these floors when we're done, after we get done power troweling them, they're within a sixteenth of an inch. Now you can see the guy in the hat there, he's kick screeding, so we just work our way backwards, and as we pick one foot up, we kick and fill it in with the concrete. And if we're not low, 
then we usually don't have to stop. We can usually do the whole bay without stopping. So yeah, there's the first truck. We'll get that second one backed in. Again, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. And if you want to learn how to do this, click on that link in the description where it says Concrete Slab Course. Just go check it out. You see, we got the old style bull float where you got to lift it up, push it down. We got the other kind too with a knuckle where you just twist the handle. But again, you know, we're so old school that we just, you get used to using the same thing over and over again and you don't want to change sometimes. That bull float is the one with the rounded edges too. That's a four foot bull float and it, it barely leaves any lines when you bull float. So it makes it real easy when you go to start finishing. If you've got a square bull float, the corners really leave lines that could be a quarter inch deep sometimes. And if you don't get on it in time with a power trial, those lines can come out pretty hard. You can see half of this slab is in the sun and half of it is in the shade right now. So the part that's in the sun is going to dry twice as fast as the part in the shade. So we want to make the finishing process as easy as possible. And that bull float with the rounded edges is one way to do that. As you can see, we like to pour out just about the whole truck before we start straight edging. Pouring it out usually takes longer than magging the edges, setting the pads, and screeding for us. The guy there is still putting more of those braces on. Nothing worse than having edges that are not straight. You gotta be perfect. So we gotta pull some of the concrete back to get that one back. There was a lot of pressure on that board. Yeah, now we can keep dumping. He can keep vibrating the edge. The guy in the hard hat there, the white hard hat, he's the guy that's going to be building the garage. So he's just there making sure we're doing our job, I guess. The guy taking the pictures, he's from the college. So how many of you guys how many of you guys that do concrete shoot pads like we do make wet pads and then wet screed let me know down in the comments and how many of you guys kick screed like us I mean a lot of guys nowadays they just vibra screed um, I don't think probably most people vibra screed nowadays is there anybody out there that still kick screeds like we do let me know down in the comments thing with screeding, kick screeding like this is you can screed, really you could screed that thing without anybody raking. You might have to stop once or twice. With a vibra screed you couldn't do that. You have to have at least one guy raking, if not two, with a vibra screed to get it good and flat. I wonder in 39 years how many miles of concrete I've straight edged. You can see it's actually quite easy once you do it a lot. Even the part where you have to bend over, it isn't really that bad. So it's just a process when you pour a concrete slab like this. I mean you start at one end, you usually try to get you know, you don't have to dump the whole truck out. You could just dump a section out 
at least the size of your straight edge, like that 14 foot straight edge, you could dump a section out that's about 16 by 16 and e either have your wet pad there then do that one section and then dump another if you're not as fast as we are there's no reason you can't do it that way it just take you longer um, I mean most concrete companies like this one here we use a lot so they don't charge us any extra wait time usually you have about seven minutes per yard to get the truck empty um, that's never been an issue for us. I've never got charged uh, extra time. And a lot of trucks, a lot of companies will also charge you a small load charge. If you're a do-it-yourself or a homeowner, even or even a contractor sometimes. But because we pour so much concrete with them, um, even on small jobs, even if it was just a yard, they would just send us a yard and not charge us any extra Hey guys, so remember, if you want to learn how to form and pour a concrete slab like the one in the video, the link for the course is in the description below. Go ahead down there and check it out. That's it, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.